Hello and welcome back to the Hairy Housewife YouTube channel. You a beautiful lot. Now, if you're here, I'm guessing you're into car care or detailing, or you've stumbled on this YouTube channel by mistake, that name can catch a few people out. Now, whatever reason you are here, you might as well stay and come along for the ride. Now, in my last sort of full length video I'd done, I took this old girl through an automatic car wash and people in the comments went wild saying, you're gonna scratch, you're gonna mar, you're gonna damage your paintwork on your vehicle. Well, this week, I may have taken it a step further. Hello and welcome back. And that is right, this week I may have taken it a step too far. And if you haven't seen my previous full length video that I posted a couple of weeks ago, I took this old girl through an automatic car wash and people in the comments went wild. They were calling me crazy. They were saying, you know, you're gonna scratch and mar your vehicle. You're gonna damage your paintwork. And I was like, yeah, I know Look, the vehicle's already marred and scratched. You know, it's had a hard life over the last year and it didn't really bother me that much. The weather was awful, I needed the car cleaned, and I thought, you know what, I'll take you guys along for the ride, and I stuck this through an automatic car wash. Yes, it was painful, even though I know the car was scratched and marred, it was still very painful to do. Now, once I'd uploaded that video onto YouTube that night, my mind got a wandering, I started going through the YouTube shorts, and all of a sudden, an advert pops up for a detailing hack, the latest detailing invention, and it kind of gripped me. I'll show you guys what it was. Now, as you can see, it is some sort of spinny head car cleaning contraption. And yeah, do you know what? After I uploaded my last video, my mind was a bit soft and mushy and I thought, I'm gonna buy one of them. And that's exactly what I done. I went out and bought one of them. If you haven't guessed from the thumbnail of this video, that is exactly what this video is about. Now I am outside. You're not gonna see the office today. It's because I wanted you guys to have another sort of reaction video of me using this product for the first time and my genuine reaction on the day of using it. Now I do have that item behind me and I haven't opened that box since it was delivered. And it's been about a week and a half since that was delivered. I've been itching to open that. So let's open this together and see what's inside. For all I know, it could be a broken up clock with spare parts in there. Um, and I could have been ripped off because like I said, I haven't opened this since it was delivered. So I'm hoping what I ordered is inside. So now I've come around to the back of the car to have a cheeky little sit down where we go through and see what's inside this box. Now, before I start, ignore the state of the sort of boot liner. Um, I had a fight with a pencil sharpener the other day and I, well, I lost. And um, there's pencil shavings everywhere. I need to get this hoovered out. However, you're not here to see that. You're here to see what's inside here. Now I'm hoping, like I said, in here is what I ordered. Um, otherwise, that was a very expensive box of broken biscuits. Um, <laughs> So let's open it up. Now again, I haven't opened this since I bought it, so this is a surprise to me, as it is to you. Now inside, we clearly have the head of this thing, which has like a chenille mitt on it, and this brush. Now the brush itself feels nice and soft. Oh, however, on the tip of it, the tips of the brush feel very sharp. I'm not sure about that on the paint, but the chenille itself, Nice and soft, nice and fluffy. Um, and obviously in here is where we put our shampoo. Now it is a little bit dusty, it's a little bit dirty. Don't know if it's brand new, whether it's uh, a return, but I paid full price for this with it being brand new. Now also in the box we get I'm guessing some sort of extension tubes that go onto the handle. There we go. Um, so I'm guessing this goes onto here. I have watched a video of this, honestly. Um, we screw this on there. And I'm guessing this bit slots on the end. Now what I do like here is this does have an on and off for the water flow. And we've got how much soap goes through the head there as well. Um, but the on and off for the water flow is really handy. So you can turn it off, pop it down, do what it needs to do, turn it back on, 
and then you can away you go. Now it doesn't go on a pressure washer, it does go on your standard garden hose. Now I'm guessing, yep, we have a little attachment in there that goes in that end. It's a little bit tight. It does feel very um, plasticky on the joints. However, it does feel, don't want to break it before I use it, but it does feel nice and sturdy. You're not going to stand on that and bend it by mistake, even on the joints. Very sturdy. Now, how funny would that have been if I'd have snapped it before I even got to use it? Now, also in the box, we get this little attachment. No. <laughs> it, it goes on your kitchen tap, you tighten it up. That's if you don't have an outside uh, like hose. But I mean, if you're buying this and you've already got a hose, you're already gonna have that, so pointless. So now, let's crack on, let's fill this up. Now I'm gonna fill this up with my favorite shampoo. And all of you at home probably screaming at the telly, is that gonna be Dodo Juice? And it is. However, Dodo Juice shampoo is quite thick. Now the video I have seen of this, they put quite a watery shampoo in it. So I'm gonna put Dodo Juice in it first, and then if it doesn't work, I have a watery one sitting on the side, on the benches, waiting to go. So guys, let's get this filled up and give it a go. So now if you've never used a garden attachment before and you're used to just plugging this straight into your pressure washer, it's very much the same. Don't turn your water on until you've got it plugged in and make sure you have these done up nice and tight. Now, again, I've never used this before. I don't know if it's gonna leak. Um, again, it does feel okay quality. It doesn't feel as cheap as I was expecting, but I'm waiting to have to run in, grab the PTFE white tape to go around, you know, a bit of plumber's tape um, and seal it off. But you never know, it might surprise me. Now, once we've got that plugged in, it's time to go switch the water on. Now, I'm gonna pop this on the roof of the car. Don't put it on the ground. I mean, it's, you don't wanna put more abrasiveness on it anyway. I'm gonna go turn the water on and I'll be back. I should have turned it off first. Um, so as you can see, once you turn the water on, it does start working unless you have this little valve turned off. There, now, let's have a quick look. So we turn it on. And you can see the head is instantly spinning. Now, if you look in there, you can see how it's working. There is a jet pushing onto a plastic cog. Um, and I wouldn't say it's like, you know, it's just pushing on these little plastic lugs there. So I don't know how solid this is gonna be. I don't know if it's gonna stall if you put it on the car. Um, let's. Okay, so I'm pushing quite hard on that and I am struggling to stall it. So it does take some force to stall that and stop it from turning. So, I mean, you shouldn't be pushing that hard on your car anyway. So, you know, it should be okay on your vehicle. So now we're gonna fill this up with shampoo and uh, yeah, see what it's like. Now, if you're not a fan of horror films and uh, I'd switch over now, because uh, if you're into detailing, you're into car care, and you worry about scratching and marring, then this is gonna be painful for you, I'm sure. So I've got my shampoo now here. I've not got a lot left, don't worry. I've still got five liters in the house. Um, we're gonna just literally pop this in here. Now, there are no measurements. It doesn't tell you how much is in this little jug, so I'm just gonna fill it up. We'll do it halfway. I don't wanna fill it all the way to the brim. There we go. And as you can see, it is quite a thick one. On the videos I've seen, when they pour it in, they pour it like water and it's very, very thin. So I do have another one standing by, ready to pop in after we've tried this one, just in case this one is too thick to go through the little mechanism in the head. So now all we do is we grab our little pot of shampoo, we pop it on, and away we go. Now let's see if this does foam up. So I'm gonna put it that way around first to try and get some shampoo to go down into the head. Okay, we don't seem to be getting any shampoo coming through. There's a few suds, but I wouldn't say there's nothing like they show on the video. They show it foaming and sudsy everywhere. I don't see any stuff coming from that. A 
right, give me a second. Let me just have a, I'm gonna take this off. We'll just go over there. Um, I'll take this off. I've got nowhere to rest this. Um, two seconds. Okay, so I have now worked it out. Um, I don't know if I'll keep that bit or not. Basically, just had a bit of a fail. Um, we'll see how the edit goes, whether I keep it or not. <laughs> Might save it for the end of the year. Anyway, if you've seen it, yeah. Anyway, so what you do here is you turn that there. There's three size little holes in there. There's one that forces some water in and one that forces the water back out. So this should fill up with water. Um, and depending on what hole you have it on, depends on how much soap obviously comes out. So now I've got this set up. Let's give it a go on the car. Now I can see instantly that's now frothing up where water's being forced in and it's going to be forcing shampoo down into this little head. Now as we do have a nice foam coming out, it's time we try this on the car. Now instantly as I put this on, you can see, I am not moving it around. That is moving itself. Um, you can almost call it some magic trick. It's... Um, but it is pulling itself around. You can see it's got some force in it. And again, pushing down on that, the head on there doesn't stall. You can see it's still quite spinning. Now going around the car, it does feel nice and smooth. It's not as rough as I thought it was going to be. Now, I can see those bristles touching. And again, those bristles were sharp on the ends. It's almost like when they cut these bristles, um, they slice them off with some sort of hot razor because they're nice and soft around here. The ends, again, are razor sharp. They feel really like, you know, when you've got a bit of burnt plastic, um, it just feels like that. And it doesn't feel very, very nice um, at all. And I can imagine it's probably going to be inflicting some scratch to my car, but we'll find out a little bit later on. Remember, I've got my test panel, I don't know if you see it on Instagram, that I corrected one side of, I'm gonna put this on there, and I'm gonna put it to a bit of an extreme test, I'm gonna, you know, give it a bit of a going over, and see if this can, you know, makes any scratch to marring on that little bit that was corrected. Now, I'm gonna go around the whole vehicle with this and see how nice it is to use. I'm gonna take you along for the ride with me. So again, flicking it back on, those suds are almost instant now. It's loaded up and ready to go. Now, I don't know how long the shampoo in this will last. Now, it does feel nice and easy. Now, for me, do you know what? If you've got a bad back, this would be ideal for getting down and reaching down in low places, as well as up high in places like roofs. Now, if you had a horse box, a van, a lorry, this would be perfect for you. And if you're not too worried about scratching the marin, do you know what? Tall car like this, Perfect. I'm like getting the roof up there with absolute ease. And again, like I said, I might be judging this too quick. This might not scratch. This might not mar that test panel. It might not be that bad. I could be judging this too quick. Like I said, I've come into this wanting to hate this. And so far, I'm not going to lie, I'm starting to like this. Um, it does feel really, really nice to use. It feels like it's gliding over the paintwork. And look, so you don't get wet, you can flick it off swap round and flick it back on. Do you know what I am feeling though? While I'm using this, I feel another bathroom video coming on. What do you reckon? Nice and soft. Won't be the first time and it probably won't be the last. Now back on we go. As we come round to the bonnet, there is some bird poo on this bonnet, as you'll see. Um, and this, how well does this take it off? As you can see, it took that off with absolute ease, without any real effort at all. Now again, remember, this thing, I tried pushing it to start off with, and it didn't stall very easy. Um, I don't want to push it down too hard on my own vehicle. Again, my vehicle is scratched and marred. You guys see it go through automatic car wash. You guys put the comments in the section. And I'm sure you're doing the same thing right now, and I'm sure you're all calling me a little bit odd um, for doing these sort of reviews. However, do you know what? This could be a fantastic device for you to have. I'm not gonna lie, I quite like this and it's making 
washing effortlessly. Now, I feel like I'm turning into a bit of a QVC style selling channel, but I'm really not. I, it's just, I can see the logic behind this device. I can see why someone might want to use this. You know, again, you enjoy washing your car. You ain't got the mobility to get down there. That's ease of use. Now look, some people do forget, you know, not everybody out there is worried about scratching and marring. You know, if you're one of these people that love to wash your car, but you just can't do it, you're probably taking it to six or seven pound local car washes. You're probably taking it to somewhere for someone else to wash it for you. So you're not eradicating the scratching and marring if you're going to an auto car wash because it's gonna happen just as much. Now with this, you could limit it. You could hit your car with a pre-wash spray first, get as much of that dirt and grime off as possible because I don't care what anybody says, anything that touches your vehicle is an abrasive. A wash mitt, a drying towel, a pad, a wash pad, anything will be an abrasive. Anything that touches your paintwork will become an abrasive because it has the chances of scratching and marring. And what our idea is to do is reduce that scratching and marring before we go on with those pads, those wash medias, those drying towels. So if you can hit this with a citrus pre-wash, a strong pre-wash before using this and then rinsing it off to eradicate as much dirt as possible before going on with this, you're gonna be doing yourself a favor. And then using a good quality shampoo in this, you know, again, you won't go wrong. Now look, I've tried it. I've gone around most of the vehicle with this and it's done quite well. Now I was surprised. I was expecting this thick shampoo to maybe clog up, not be able to go through there, but I didn't realize how this worked again. Didn't read the instructions again. I don't know if they're in a the box or not. I, um, I didn't really check. Now, one thing I did think about while I've been doing this is earlier on before I put this on, I did notice, bear with me. this little bit here. Now this is what that screws onto and it puts it down into a jet, which reduces the water that going through, so it increases the pressure, which helps that turbine turn in there to make that little bit spin. Now when I've been going around the vehicle, if you know me, you know what I'm like, things have been going through my brain. And I was thinking, well, that's gonna have a bit of high pressure for it. So I don't, I mean, I don't know, I haven't read the manual. Again, I can't remember if there's one in the box or not. I don't know if they've said you can do this, but we've got that high pressure nozzle there Will this rinse the car off? And the answer is yes. Now there is some force behind that. And that is doing a cracking job at rinsing the vehicle off with absolute ease. Yes, you could pop this off and put your hose pipe gun on. Yes, you could take it off and just rinse it over the hose pipe. But if you've gone over citrus pre-wash, before going on with that brush, you could use this. You could put your citrus pre-wash on. I mean, there is some power behind that. So if you hit the car with citrus pre-wash, you've kind of got a nice powerful jet there to rinse it off and get as much dirt off as possible before going on with this device. Now, I don't know if they recommend doing that, but if you've got one of these or you're looking to buy one of these, I definitely recommend using that over the open end on your hose pipe because there is some pressure there and it will help remove dirt and grime off the car before going in with the spinning head brush. Now, like I said before, um, I'm gonna put a sort of thinner shampoo in that to see maybe if it froths up a little bit more. Now in their videos, they show that to be a little bit foamier. Yes, if you adjust that dial on there properly, you can get more foam out. But in their videos, they show it really, really frothy. Now, I don't know if it's because my shampoo's too thick to get through it properly. I know it forces water in and forces shampoo into it, but maybe a thinner shampoo may be better, or maybe it might be worse. It might drain it a lot quicker. Now, before I go into that, again, while I've been going around a vehicle, I've thought about other uses this might be good for. If you buy one of these and you decide it's not for you, and you don't like how it feels in your vehicle, or you're worried to use it on your vehicle, and you think, I've just wasted my money, what else could you use this for? Now, you could use this for cleaning your windows, cleaning signs around your house, or, now this one I did film in between sort of charging microphone. So my microphone died only a little bit short while ago. So when I was waiting for this to charge up, I, I haven't filmed the windows or signs yet, but I did film this one while I was waiting for it to charge up. And this is a garage door next to where I live. Now it's a derelict garage. It's um, not being used by anybody. And this door hasn't been cleaned in a long, long time. Now, if I rub my finger over it, you can see the dirt is stuck on there, the grime is stuck on there. 
Now, when I go over this brush, you can see it's taking that dirt and grime off with absolute ease. So, if you've got one of these and you've decided it's not for your vehicle and you think I've wasted my money there, no, you haven't. Use it to clean your windows with. Use it for jobs around the house. Use it for your patio. Use it for fascia boards. Use it for cladding if you have it. Use it for signs. Use it for cleaning wheelie bins. There's loads of other jobs you could use this for. It's not just dedicated for cars, even though it's only sold for vehicles. There's hundreds of things you could use this for, I'm sure. However, now we're gonna chuck in a thinner shampoo, like I said, and we're gonna see how it gets on. Now the shampoo I put in there, I don't know if you can see this, it is literally like water. It's a lot thinner than the, the Dodo Juice Born To Mild. So we'll see how much this sort of suds up with that head. So now we have it attached. Let's see if this is any foamier. So no, to me, it looks like the thinner it is, the worse it is. I could see, let's try and turn it on and show the camera. You can see it's pushed a lot of the shampoo out already. And if I turn it on, you can see that shampoo is changing very quickly to a clear color. So that is leaking out. That is going out far too quick. So I would definitely recommend using a thicker shampoo and maybe dilute it down by half. Because you can see, that is no way near as sudsy. Even if I flick these around here, you know, that's on a lower amount of shampoo coming through. Back up to the top amount. There is no way near as many suds coming through there as there was with the Dodo Juice Thick Born To Be Mild. So now let's go on and let's try it. It's all over my hands. Uh, you know what? That is a lot worse. I feel like because it is thinner, it's leaking out somewhere because this all of a sudden has become very slippery. Don't know if you can see that. There seems to be suds coming up everywhere. It just seems very slippery and very slimy and greasy now. Um, whereas I didn't get that with the thicker shampoo. Um, however, let's go ahead and let's try this on that test panel that has been corrected and see if this is gonna scratch and mar. So now here we have my test panel. Now, if you've got me on Instagram, you'll know that the other day I corrected this test panel and ready for this test. I went over with a medium cut polish and then finished it off with a final cut polish and a soft foam pad. Now I'm gonna go over with this brush. I've already hit the panel with a pre-wash spray, a citrus pre-wash spray to get as much dirt and grime off as possible, like you probably would with your own vehicle. And now I'm gonna hit it with this brush. there we have it that is that bonnet cleaned and all i need to do then is take the head off like before and use the tip to rinse it down now although i went over that quite gently what i'm now going to do is put the head back on because i really want to put this to an extreme test to see if it will scratch and mar maybe if it was in the wrong hands or maybe if you just push too hard so i'm now going to do something quite extreme even though i'm pushing with all my force it still isn't stalling oh just about look pushing as hard as i can and it's there we go i've managed to stall it so it is quite powerful um you know it's doing <laughs> quite a good job at keeping spinning against the force of my um, my arm, my full strength. Now there we have it, I'm gonna rinse it off now, I'm gonna let it dry and we're gonna come back and see if it's swirlier than before I started. Now it's a little bit hard to pick up on the camera but I'm hoping you can see this. There you go, you can just see it there. Now the other day I spent a good few hours 
polishing just this part of the panel to make it almost perfect. And again, I didn't show you it before, um, that's my mistake, but I can, I can tell you now that was completely swirl, scratch and mar free. That brush has inflicted marring into this paintwork. Um, again, I pushed really hard. It was an extreme circumstance, um, but it does show that that brush can scratch and mar paintwork. So yeah. So there we have it. Now ignore what I said earlier. Tucked in the bottom of the box, there was some instructions. And when you turn to step six, it says unscrew the head off and it can be used for rinsing off the car, rinsing out detergent or watering your garden flowers. I wouldn't want to water my garden flowers with that. That was a little bit too powerful. However, the instructions were there. I just didn't look hard enough. Um, again, that's what happens when I do these things live. Um, I haven't had time to sit down and go through it all. I literally unboxed it, got too excited and started washing the car. I didn't look hard enough to see if the instructions were in the box. Now, you're probably all sitting here expecting me to say, do not buy this. And I'm not gonna. You know, yes, it did scratch and mar that bonnet but I did push really hard and I did sort of put it for an extreme measures. Now, would you wanna use this if your car was scratch or swirl free? If you had a show car, if you wanted to keep your car looking the best condition possible, would you wanna use this? Not really, not unless you wanna go underneath your bumpers, underneath the seals. If you don't wanna bend down, but you wanna get that little bit underneath your seal, maybe like this, you know, I've got sidebars. If I wanna get underneath those, then this would be perfect but I'm not gonna say don't buy it because you might not use it, it might not be for you, but for a lot of people, it will work for. So someone like my dad, that again, doesn't care about scratching and marring, this would be ideal for him. If you've got, again, mobility issues and you want to clean your car, you enjoy cleaning your car, and you're not really worried about scratches or swells or the odd spider web on your car, and again, this could be for you. You know, again, I'm not gonna sit here and slag this off because what it did was wash the car. What it did, it did it well. You know, it feels sturdy, it feels good quality. And again, after washing the car on that test panel, you know, my car, I didn't pre-rinse my car. I was a little bit naughty. I didn't put much on there, you know. I went around with a bit of forced, rinsed it off. I, there was still dirt all over the vehicle. Um, again, I hit the wheels, I hit underneath the seals. That is still looking nice, fresh and clean. So it isn't taking that dirt off and it's not sticking in there. So it's not dragging that around your paintwork like I was expecting it to. Um, and it's not as harsh as I was expecting it to. Now, if they did a version of this without this bristle or with those bristles softer, then I would say, you know, it would be a lot better. But as it is, it's not bad. I, I was hoping to hate this. I was hoping to come here and say to you guys, it's awful, this is the worst thing I've ever used in the world. This is useless, don't use it, don't blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say you shouldn't buy one. If you're sitting watching this thinking, you know, I want something to wash my car with easy. I don't wanna have to bend down. Will it work for me? Yeah. You know, if you're not too worried again about those micro scratches and micro marring, then by all means, give it a go. I would recommend before using this though, even if you don't have a pressure washer, because you don't need a pressure washer for this. You don't, this, you know, if you don't want to, if you haven't got a pressure washer, again, this could be ideal for you. But if you don't want to inflict scratch and marring and you want to try and do as much of a safe wash as possible, then hit your car with some sort of pre-wash before, you know, a pre-wash spray and then rinse that off with the hose pipe. You know, because you're not using a pressure washer, I would recommend using quite a strong one. Something like Forced from Starnagloss, Dodo Juice Crudzilla, I Detail Pro pre -wash Spray, something strong that's gonna remove as much dirt as possible before touching your car with this, because anything that contacts your car is classed as an abrasive. So, you know, it will inflict scratch and marring. So if you can reduce the amount it's gonna do before touching this on your car, then that's a gold star. Um, but it's not awful. I'm not gonna sit and say, don't buy it. I'm sure I'm gonna be worrying some of you in the comments, but it's actually quite a handy device to have, not only for the people that just want to wash their car and are not worried about the scratch and swirling, for people that own, say, lorries, horse boxes, people that don't need to keep their cars looking fresh and clean. Tractors, you know, they're gonna get covered in mud, they're gonna get covered in scratches, they're gonna be dented and dinged anyway, so if they just wanna quickly wash the vehicle and get as much mud off as possible, this could be ideal for you. Again, I set out to unbox this and hate this and have a ranty video, but 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that today. This isn't awful, this isn't bad, and I am very, very shocked. So if you want to give it a go, again, I wouldn't say not to, but I wouldn't say to use it if you want to keep your car scratch and swirl free. Now guys, I am shocked. I'm sure some of you are worried. I've been the hairy housewife. You guys have been great. And I'll see you all again very soon.